Well, good morning, everyone. Having seen the um, news report on Sermon Audio entitled, Joel Olstein Discusses Views on End Times and Heaven, it's a 12-minute and 45-second YouTube clip. Um, the interviewer is a man from the Colorado Nine News. His name is uh, Lance Berry. He takes uh, Joel through a series of questions that are worth um, commenting on uh, because of the manner in which uh, Joel has such tremendous influence and yet is um, often incredibly wrong, unfortunately. Of course, that's not coming from my opinion. That's just a basic interpretation of the scripture, looking at what Joel says, comparing it to what the Bible says, and then reconciling the significant differences. First, it seems most appropriate to comment that um, the interviewer refers to Olsen as a televangelist. The, the f reality is Olsen is a motivational speaker. He's not an evangelist. Uh, you have to preach the gospel in order to be an evangelist. And as you see uh, and will uh, listen as you walk through this interview, uh, the word gospel is not even mentioned a single time. Uh, could have been mentioned numerous opportunities. Olsen had to make reference to the gospel, but avoids it and does not make any reference to it. Does identify Christ as the only way. Um, and then after saying that, opens the door as wide as he possibly can. Downplays denominational differences. Says he can't make any judgments. And so if you're in doubt about whether Olsen is... A preacher of the gospel, you need to check out um, Al Mohler's um, great audio clip on um, whether Olstein preaches the gospel. First thing I want to address is uh, the interviewer makes reference to these end times events that we're seeing, storms, earthquakes, all those type of events, and ask Olstein, are we living in the end times? And Osteen wavers and seems to suggest that yes, and this is a good thing. We've got lots to look forward to. It's only going to get better, is the paraphrase of Osteen's direction. Um, look above for Christ is coming, and this is a great thing. And he is right. It is a good thing that Christ is coming. Um, but the reality is if, if a student of the Bible will study Matthew 24, 25, 26... If a student of the Bible will move over to uh, the book of Revelation, what we realize is that there is significant or great tribulation on the horizon. There's no doubt about that. And uh, even the pre-tribulation days will have to be miserable in order to get to the tribulation days. Olstein's Christianity is an American Christianity. Uh, I'm sure being a Christian in Iran is not the same as being a Christian in America. And as the global persecution of Christians increases, the reality is being a Christian will not be the great prosperity event kind of a feeling uh, that Olstein projects onto the Bible. You almost get a sense that he's afraid of saying anything negative. Um, this really comes out with the next series of questions. Uh, the interviewer commends Osteen for not asking for donations on television, asks why he doesn't ask for donations, and Osteen says, well, the, the reason we don't is because uh, we don't want to offend anyone. And really, that's the central issue. Osteen is not willing to say anything or to do anything that could be on offense to anyone. It's it's as though there's a Teflon coating that insulates or isolates him from uh, being offensive. So nothing negative is going to come out of his mouth. He's Mr. Positive, um, nothing confrontational, nothing divisive. And yet, if you read the Gospels, that is not Jesus. So on the one hand, in the beginning of the interview, he says, I want to represent Jesus. On the other side, he's not willing to say anything that is divisive like Jesus says. He's not willing to be confrontational the way Christ is confrontational. He's not willing to, to say the hard sayings that Christ said. 
which means he can't be a gospel preacher because the gospel begins with the premise that there's an enmity between man and God and that enmity is not on God's side, it's on our side and the sin that we sin which creates a barrier that must be overcome and it can only be overcome through the blood of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, the, the message of the gospel which is completely absent from anything that Olstein says. When asked about the wealth uh, that Olstein encourages, Olstein runs to, the, to Abraham, talks about the covenant that God made with Abraham. Interestingly enough, God has not made that covenant with Christians. Christians live in the new covenant. Interestingly enough, uh, Olstein says that Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham is the wealthiest man in the East. The fact is the Bible doesn't make that definitive statement. There's no doubt that Abraham owned lots of property, livestock, and, and would have been considered wealthy. The truth is, Christ was broke. Paul was broke. Um, Christ was homeless. Paul was a traveling church planter. The idea of accumulating and building wealth is really absent in the first century church. It's just not there. Um, men were selling what they owned. Um, really a better book to get a, a proper perspective on this to bring a counterbalance to what Alstein teaches would be David Platt's book Radical um, in which a, a much more accurate uh, assessment of what the New Testament teaches in regard to um, wealth uh, is presented. Next, uh, the interviewer asked about gays in the church. This just comes up over and over again. I don't want to address it in great detail. I, I, I Last week I did an uh, audio commentary on this gay issue in Ukraine. You can refer to that if you'd like. But I thought it was interesting that um, Olstein says that all gays are encouraged to come to his church, welcome in his church, it's no problem, because he has a message of encouraging everyone to do better. Uh, the truth of the matter is Paul did not encourage everyone to do better. Acts 20.21 20, says that the summary or the testimony of the apostles' message was repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, absent. The word ab repentant, absent from Olstein's preaching. Uh, the call to change, absent. The call to identify yourself as a sinner in need of a savior is is muffled or or barely present, could be inferred. Uh, no doubt some folks have uh, been born again through uh, the preaching of Olstein, um, but the truth of the matter is a clear gospel present is simply absent. Olstein says he didn't go to school, didn't go to seminary. Of course, you don't have to go to seminary, but it would have done him well to go to seminary. He'd be a better preacher, more biblically grounded, have a better command of the scriptures, would be able to answer uh, questions uh, from a more appropriate and biblical and accurate perspective. Things like Olstein's comment that he wants to just make God practical. You know, we don't make God practical. God is who he is. It's not the preacher's job to bring God down to uh, uh, the people. It's the preacher's job to present who God is and to call the, the, call the masses, to call the people of God, to call the unrepentant sinners to put their faith in Christ, to look to God, to turn to God. Uh, we are not here as pastors and teachers and evangelists to bring God down, but to present God and then to call on people to identify their need for God. And this should lead them to repentance. So in conclusion, it's critical that every word that Olstein says is examined in light of the scripture and that where he is in clear contradiction or is not presenting a holistic approach, isolated scriptures, isolated passages, isolated themes, 
this must be identified. And, uh, and, and we cannot allow, regardless of the size of his ministry, to give him more credibility than he deserves. For all authority is found only in the text. So if this little audio commentary has been helpful to you, if it has, check out other sermons on our uh, website, Brian Baptist Church, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Have a great day.